What's going on guys? So we've been spending some time trying to organize the barn and get things where it goes. And as you've seen, I've pushed most of the stuff over to this side because we have something kind of special going on over here. So on this side is my little live practice studio setup. And a lot of folks may have watched some of the videos I've recently done where I show you guys that I do play drums. And I'm a Christian band drummer, so I play in a Christian band. And, uh, you know, I absolutely love playing for the cause that we play for, and that's to get people inspired about God. Now, I have used to play in rock bands. I've played in blues bands and jazz bands. I've played drums for nearly 25 years, maybe a little longer than that, actually. And when I played for some of those other bands, it was always playing to the song based on how you felt the song should be played to. And that's entirely different than how you play to Christian music. So Christian music is, is actually a lot more complex than most people might assume. And it's such a different type of experience whenever you're learning Christian music than you're learning rock music or punk music or jazz or any of those to where... A lot of those other forms of music are very abstract from a percussion perspective. But when you're playing Christian music, you, you really want to try to play to the song according to how it was originally written and also not overplay it in a way that, that you're trying to show off. You know, there's, there's a lot of rock music out there. You can do blast beats, double bass beats, all that stuff. Um, but the reality is, is when you're playing a Christian music, you're really wanting to play for the message of getting people excited about God, less so the band itself, if that makes sense. You're kind of there to, to fill in the atmosphere. Now, this is my live setup. And a lot of people would say, well, why do you have an electric drum set for a live setup? Well, because I can control the volume a little bit easier than I can with an acoustic set. I can play soft on acoustic sets, but you can't play quite as soft. Otherwise, you lose the tone of the drum. You lose how the drum is designed to resonate and ring. So I have my DW kit um, up in the bedroom at the other house because that's what I typically will practice on. And that's because when I play in the other one, I can play as loud as I want because I'm really playing through headphones. But whenever we have the band over and we're playing live, I really want to be able to take a relatively small space and control the sound. So this is why we have this setup going on here. I have two Mackie Thumb powered PA speakers up here. I have a MTX powered sub down here. Um, over here is my drum kit. This is actually a, kind of a hodgepodge drum kit. Um, I've started off using Roland V drums and, and a lot of the cheaper V drum pads. So many people may think that I have some unlimited budget for this stuff and I don't. So I try to always look for bargains. And what I found here was I actually put together a kit using Lemon Drums. And Lemon is a brand that's kind of a, I guess, a knockoff of Roland. But they work really, really well, and they're super affordable. So I was able to essentially piece together my entire six-piece kit the way that I would normally set it up, but using electric drums and get the sound, feel, and style that I was looking for. Now, the bass drum itself is actually from a Jazz Ludwig kit. So I bought that bass drum because it was a heck of a deal on eBay, and I just wanted a compact bass drum like that, and I've converted it into an electric drum using a Pearl True Track head on the other side. A single bass drum pedal on this kit, and I use a Roland TD-7 module for controlling all of this stuff. The cymbals are also lemon cymbals, and they work really, really well. They pretty much emulate exactly the Roland cymbal. Um, I use the Roland hi-hat and hi-hat trigger. I think it triggers a little bit better. And instead of using a rack, I love to use stands because I can position stands uh, to my liking much, much, much better than I can a rack. I've used racks in the past and I'm just not a big fan of them. Um, I use Rocket 6 monitors, so I have a monitor for me behind the drums. These are actually studio monitors, but I use them for, for live monitors, so that's behind me so I can kind of hear what I'm playing whenever the PA speakers are in front. I have another one over here that goes towards the keyboard. Uh, the keyboard is a keyboard that I bought like 16 years ago, 15 years ago when it first came out. This is a Yamaha Mo 6. So it's a 61 key keyboard versus an 88. I do wish I had an 88 key, but for what we use it for, this thing works absolutely great. Uh, it's actually a music production workstation, which is overkill for what we would need. And it actually makes things really complicated when it comes to actually trying to just use it as a keyboard. So I might end up trying to trade this in or get rid of it and get an 88 key kind of a synthesizer more than anything where you just have a lot of sounds. You can do your, your split 
of keys or if I want like strings on this side and piano on that side or you know some type of an arpeggio we can do that uh, this is just overkill for what we need and um, but it still sounds great I mean Yamaha has always made fantastic sounding workstations and that's awesome uh, the mixer we use over here is the zoom l20 uh, this is a full digital mixer board uh, and it's super cool because it has built-in recording multi-track recording uh, and I can even isolate individual tracks it has six monitor outs which is really cool for certain environments if each person need to needs to wear like ears or headphones so they can specifically hear what they're playing with their own mix you can do that here and you can individually control every track going into each one of those monitor outs which is super cool that basically means like if i want more drums or if i want more guitar or more bass i can do that just for the headphones i'm wearing and not impact what's coming out of the speakers or what's going into anybody else's ears love that and then i have a small version of it over here and this is really just what I use so I can plug my phone in if I want to do practicing with music in the background so I can plug my phone through an adapter there that is the zoom and this is the L8 so it's the baby baby brother to this they have the L12 uh, in between and that's what I use at the other house with the DW drum set to mic up every drum so I have a 12 channel digital mixer at the other uh, house so I can essentially mic everything up. Um, this is just so I can have any control I want going into this then into the main board. This board right here controls all my microphones. Uh, we have a really cool little bass emulator right here so instead of having a huge bass cabinet in here um, the bass player can simply plug in right here and he has all the same controls he would have normally on a bass head or a bass amplifier and it feeds directly into the board, so it mixes directly into the PA system, which is really nice. And that's the same thing we do over here. So I have this acoustic uh, little amplifier, and this thing's super cool. It's got all the main controls you would look for, uh, simply because most guitarists, when they come over, they bring their own effects pedal. And when they have their effects pedal, they go into their effects pedal, then out from the effects pedal into this, and then this goes out to the main board as well. Uh, we use... This little rhythm watch right here, this is our click. So we can set a click track so we can keep time. Um, a lot of people may not know, almost every band you listen to has a click going in their ears. You can't hear it in the audience, but they can hear it in their ears. And this goes for just about every band imaginable, whether it's a death metal band, whether it's a rock band, unless it's just a real small gig and they're playing in a live venue, um, most of the time they're going to have a click going. And this is so that the lead guitarist, vocalist can set the click. Sometimes the drummer sets it, but I usually let him set it because he programs it in. Um, but that's essentially my setup. I keep all my extra chords over here in case anybody needs to grab a chord or they need to be able to hook up to a, an effects pedal. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else that I'm missing here. As far as the drums go, again, TD-17 module right here. Griffin hi-hat pedal. Now, everything else Griffin makes is crap. It's just not good stuff. I, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't care for any of it, except this thing. For some reason, they came out with an absolutely fantastic, like, world-class hi-hat pedal that gives you spring tension. It gives you this really cool little rocker um, glide system here. Two legs that you can rotate. It's real heavy duty. I mean, they did a fantastic job here. I wish the pivot bearing right here is a little bit higher quality, but aside from that, it's, it's absolutely amazing. And you need to have a quality hi-hat stand if you're going to be using like a, an electric symbol because these things are kind of heavy and it puts a lot of weight on the spring so you want to be able to have enough tension adjustment in there that you can keep this thing up uh, use an iron cobra bass drum pedal again single bass drum pedal over here i have a double bass drum pedal uh, over at the other house it's a six piece setup these are tens these are 12s 13 inch and then an 18 inch bass drum but yeah this is my setup and for me, I, it works really well. I mean, this is just a great setup because we can control the volume of the drums. You can be sitting right here, which is only about 10, 12 feet away from the drums, and you're hearing the sound through the PA system, and we can adjust that sound. So we can turn it down, we can turn it up. So if somebody wants to come in here and just hear us practice, they don't have to feel like they're being blasted by drums that are just, you know, ringing in their ears the whole time. And then, of course, when you have drums just blasting away, everyone else is going to turn their equipment up, and that just makes it loud for everyone. So, you know, that's not the type of, of music we play. That's not the type of venue we're in. And we want people to come and kind of enjoy the sound versus, you know, put up with the sound, if that makes sense. Plus, it keeps it just quieter overall. Just we don't have to have sound blasting outside. It's just in this space where we want it. 
Um, I use Shure microphones. So this is a Shure, and I believe this is a SM48S over here. This is the famed SM57. And then over here, this is the Sennheiser E609. So this is more of like an instrument mic. That's what you would put in front of an amplifier or in front of something else. So if somebody else brings their own amplifier, which sometimes, you know, the guitarist will do, we can set that in front of the amplifier and we can feed that into the PA system as well. Aside from that, we have some wireless mics over here. So we have two more mics. So we can run really, a, we could run a lot more mics if we want, but the way it's set up right now, we have five mics that are ran and, uh, yeah, I also love the fact that with electric drums, it's only one channel that you're taking up on your mixer board, or two channels actually, if you're running in stereo, but it's really two channels that you're taking up on your mixer board versus, you know, seven or eight channels that you might normally take up. My other drums, I think I take up eight channels on a 12 channel board. And this is a 20 channel board, so we have plenty of flexibility for it, but then you got wires going everywhere, and you already have enough wires everywhere as it is. But yeah, this is my setup. Um, it works real well. Everything is nice and clear. Like if I turn on the keyboard, this will take a second to boot up. That's the thing about electric instruments. They do take a little bit to boot up, but it's going to auto load any files and go through that whole process. Like I said, this thing is an absolute beast to try to use if you want to use it for what it's designed for. And that's like music production, where you want to put your own instruments in. You want to do a loop track. You want to layer multiple things on top of each other. And honestly, I mean, I've watched the videos, and as smart as sometimes people say that I am, I feel dumb when it comes to actually working one of these things. My brain just gives up on it. But um, let's see what I got going on here. Oh, wait, I turned everything off, that's why. Or at least I turned the main board off. If I turn this one on. There we go. Now we have sound. So. so. very cool and of course you can set it for just about anything you want if you want to just do it as a piano I can do that as well well let me see here piano very cool setup again I wish it was 88 keys but it's not but it works exactly for what we would ever need it for um, I think it's really the perfect setup for us um, considering what little venue we have right here but Hope you enjoyed the little tour. There's a lot of um, people who are always asking me more about my setup. And again, this is my electric setup over here. I have my acoustic setup still. Yeah, it, uh, it works well for us, at least. Anyways, guys, I mean, this is really the point of this channel, right? So I can talk to you about other stuff that I like to do and things that we enjoy. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you haven't had a chance, please take a moment. Subscribe to the channel. Give me a thumbs up. Maybe uh, maybe if I get the band together, we'll play some music and, and throw some of that up on the channel too. Guys, if you haven't had a chance, please take a moment. Subscribe to the channel. Give me a thumbs up. We'll talk to you again real soon.